Okay, you guys, we're coming down to the end of the semester here, and you're going to do um, this great lab where you're going to be mapping habitat, following some general rules. This is a really classic um, way of creating habitat maps where you operate from a set of assumptions about uh, what the animal prefers. And in this case, we're dealing with the northern gannet, which is a cliff-dwelling coastal seabird. Um, and this is legit, yeah. So the areas for these nesting sites need to be greater than 80%, slope greater than 80%. They have to be on the coast. They can't be near a road, more than 300 meters away from a road. And then each area has to be at least a hectare in size. So the good news is you've done a lot of this before. You've already calculated slope. Um, you know how to do selections, select by locations, like you know within a distance of and make selections, and then you know how to calculate geometry. So a lot of this is already in your bag. I'm going to work you through in this um, tutorial how to do a reclassification, which is going to help you isolate the steep cells from the rest of the slope raster. Okay, so just taking a quick look at this, this is three data sets, roads, um, a 10 meter DEM of Maine, and then these boundary county lines, and I'll show you those in a second. Instructions are just as always. There are places, though, where you've done it before and we're not going to give you any instructions. We're just going to say you need to make this happen. Um, but there, the instructions for reclassifying are pretty specific because you've never done that before. Okay, um, another thing to remember is that the areas you're mapping are going to be very small. So don't, don't freak out if you run a tool and you can't see anything. You need to be clever think about how you can test to see if tools work and you know turn off your inputs if you um you know if you're using two input data sets or an input data set and you run a tool and get a new output well turn off the visibility of the inputs so you can see if the output is there or if it changed um, how it relates and you might have to zoom way in these these areas are very small so keep that in mind let's cruise over to um, arc gis pro so the area that we're interested in studying is covered by the DEM. Okay, we're interested in the coastline, but we're really interested in the northern part of the coastline of Maine. Um, so this is going to be your area of interest. Uh, like I said, it's a 10 meter DEM. That's here. Here's the range of values. In red, you see uh, Maine Department of Transportation public roads. We're going to use those to map areas that are more than 300 meters away from these. And then the county lines are kind of interesting because typically counties would be mapped as a polygon, but these are poly lines. But what's brilliant about this is how detailed these, um, these are. Somebody meticulously digitized around, let me turn off the DEM so you can see the base map, every single island and got a very high resolution uh, detailed map of the coastline. So you're going to use this to determine whether the steep areas are within 100 meters of the coast. So you've got everything you need. Um, and like I said, you've got experience working with the vector data. So I'm going to walk you through reclassifying. And to do that, first you have to calculate slope. So you're going to use the DEM to calculate slope. And you'll come out with something like this, where the steep areas are in dark brown and the, well, your color ramp might be totally different. But um, ARC classifies it in the table of contents. But behind this is a stretched, continuous set of values, right? I could just as easily put a stretched color ramp on this. Let me see if I can do that quickly. It might take a minute to draw, so. Um, oops, I'm not selecting the right thing here. All right, so instead of classified, let's go to a stretch. Oh, that did it really quickly, good. And let's just put some color on there so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, this is a little bit colorblind friendly. Okay, so the really steep slopes are in yellow and the flat slopes are in blue. Now you notice that a lot of the map looks blue. So that's why ARC classifies slope. It doesn't put a continuous range um, directly related to the ramp. It classifies it, so it kind of it, it highlighted some of those steeper areas. But you can see some of the cliffs along these islands here are very steep, and these are the nesting sites that we're ultimately going to be looking for. We just need to make sure that they're not near a road. But how do we isolate everything that's over 80% from everything that's under 80%. That's reclassify. So going into the geoprocessing, we can search for the reclassify tool and just open the spatial analyst version. 
and this is in the instructions, the input raster needs to be the slope, not the elevation. So make sure you put your slope data set in there. Reclassify field needs to be the value field. Why? Because those are the slope values. Okay, and then to get the cl classification scheme, to break it into two classes, less than 80 and greater than 80, you need to use this classify button. We only want two classes because it's binary. It's either like, it's true, false, greater than 80. Takes a second, but it's just gonna give you two classes in this table. Start is the lowest value of your class. End is the highest value. We want that to be 80. You can just pipe right in here. And then this is going to start at 80 and go up to the maximum. So just leave the minimum and the maximum and set your break value at 80. Okay, these are the original slope values. This column is what, um, what these values are going to be replaced with. So what it's saying is that every slope value, every single cell that has a slope value of 0 through 80 is going to be replaced with just the number 1. And every slope value from 80 to the maximum, every single one of these is going to be replaced with uh, a slope value or a new cell value of 2. So that when our new output won't have any slope values in it, it's just going to have a true and a false. I hope that makes sense. Now here's the kicker. If you do this, that's great. Every single cell in this whole slope raster here will have a polygon, or I mean, sorry, a new raster value of, of 1 and 2. But we only care about the steep stuff, 80 to 3. 38, these are the only values we care about. We want these to literally go away. So you can't make this a zero because that's still data. You want this to say no data and it needs to be spelled and formatted exactly like that or you'll get an error. Now when you run this, all the low values are going to disappear and you're going to be left with only the cells that are steep. Make sure you put it someplace logical and make sure you name it something logical like steep areas something like that. I'm not going to run it because I've done it before. I'm going to turn this guy on and this guy off. Why am I turning off the input? Because how can I tell if it worked um, if I don't turn off the input? So, wow, it doesn't look like anything's there except for if you look really close, there's tiny little pink dots right here. That's because I changed the value of my output to something super vibrant so I could see it against the base map. And if you zoom in a little bit, you can see, ooh, there are some steep areas here. Ooh la la. Well, these aren't near the coastlines, so somehow we're going to need to get rid of those. These are, but are they near roads? Oh, I don't know. Let's turn it on and see. These are probably okay, but that's not how we do GIS. We let the computer do the work for us. So um, the first thing we need to do, if we, if we want to select these areas that are near the coast or not near a road, we need to convert them into polygons because right now they're raster cells and you can't do a select by location on a raster cell. And we would want this whole group to be considered one thing. Everything that's touching, we want to be an area. But right now these are individual cells because they're rasters. So you're going to use another new tool that you haven't used before called, guess what, raster to polygon. And it literally just converts any cell that's touching it turns it into one uniform polygon. Uh, raster to polygon, right at the top, like it should be. So your input raster, not slope, but the reclassified slope. And you know you did this right if you only have one value in here. If you have two values, this isn't going to work. Go back and try it again. Uh, so input raster, set your field to value. Output polygon features, name and place them. You want to simplify so that the edge isn't uh, stair-stepped, but it's just kind of a hypotenuse. Uh, and then don't bother creating multi-part features. That'll just make it complicated. Okay, so then you'll end up with a new set of polygons that you can then proceed to do things like select within a distance of the coast or select within a distance of the roads and manipulate it down until you end up with all of the high slope areas that are near the coast, not near a road, and then when you finally have that final selection of areas, you'll calculate geometry and then sort those areas to figure out how many are greater than one hectare. Then the real fun starts. Then you have to make us an outstanding map. And I'm going to show you kind of what I mocked up here. <clears throat> Let's go back here and just turn this off. 
because it's pink. Okay, so my areas um, are treated, my polygons are in yellow. And what I did for this top map, uh -huh. boop, come on mouse, oh don't feel me now, there we go. Uh, oh, that one's not showing for some reason, but let's just disregard that. What I did here to make these show up is I made the boundary on the polygons really thick. I'll show you. Come on. Oh my goodness gracious. So I went to the properties and I made the outline color yellow and made it really big. That's how I got them to show up on this map like that. Um, all right, so we don't actually need this one. It's a duplicate. So you'll have your sites. I ended up with three. I'm hoping you end up with the same amount. There should be one up here. Um, I want you to build a locator map. So where is this located? Um, I think this is nice, an oversight map that kind of shows where the three sites are. You might want them labeled. And you guys know how hard it is to do this in ARC. So the things you need to do in ARC map are the things that um, are dynamic or map driven, like a scale bar. So I inserted a very simple scale bar, nice and clean. Um, set up a locator map and then inset maps to show the detail of the of my three final areas but then all the title work and putting the area all that i did that in um, powerpoint so what i did here is i just went ahead and um, shared this but i shared it as a png file because that it's a high resolution thing um, it it preserves um, the quality then i brought it into powerpoint and I did all my send back. I did all my text stuff in here. I just added one, two, three, labeled them on the map, made it my made my little table of areas that are made up, by the way, and did all my text stuff here. I find it so much easier to do this in PowerPoint. You can do this in Paint or wherever you want, but the key is to preserve the um, the resolution of the image so that it doesn't start getting all grainy. Um, so what I did over here for my page, uh, for layout, I went to the layout properties. And here you can do a custom page size. And I was kind of messing around with portrait and landscape, and it just kept not fitting very well. So I ended up making mine a square, 11 inches by 11 inches. And then uh, over in PowerPoint, you can oh, see, where is it? Design, I think. Under the design tab, the slide size, custom slide size, you can make it 11 by 11 over here so that it's a big slide and you preserve all that quality and you're not kind of degrading it as you move down. Then when you're done with all that mapping over here and all the text and annotations and all that, then you can do a file, save as, and then save as a PDF, or you can save as a PNG or a TIFF. These are the high resolution outputs that you can work with. And that should work for you. So this is kind of a big, a big analysis and it's a big mapping exercise. Um, remember to use the layout. Um, I created different maps for these. That's not necessary. You can do um, individual maps. Oh, and the other thing that I didn't show you guys is the scale. So if you're in layout, and you zoom into one of your areas and you think that looks pretty good. Um, I went, you click on it and it activates the scale down here. And I, it was probably at like 32,468. So I just rounded it to 20,000 and typed that in there. And then I activated this one and typed in 20,000. You don't have to, you don't have to put the one colon. You can just do that. And it'll automatically make this one 1 to 20,000 scale. And then I did the same thing for this one. So that one scale bar applies to all three. They're all the, the same scale. This one's different. And this one should probably have its own scale bar. But I don't really care. Um, well, maybe, maybe it should. This one has the main outline. So this one doesn't need a scale. It's just showing you, hey, it's up in northern Maine. Um, this one probably should have a scale bar. Um, okay, that's really it now. Have fun with this final lab. Sorry this video is so long. Um, and that's it. Go get them.